What's up, bad boys and bad girls? My name is Tim Wheaton, and we are kicking it with Tim and the Mechanic. I am joined, as always, by the Mechanic, Brandon Catino. Brandon, how was your weekend, sir? How are you doing? Man, my weekend was good, but I don't know if it was as eventful as yours was. I can't wait to talk about it with you. <laughs> Man, it was a great weekend for European fights. Like it, it, We had KSW in the time zone. We had a glory kickboxing. We had a UFC in London. We also had uh, Half Thor versus... Eddie Hall, uh, which was in Dubai. So it was a good times one for us. I missed everything because I was caught in a probable race war and a riot. And let's jump into it. <laughs> so I was on the ground at Glory 80. I had the floor seats there as, as a member of the media. And I'm going to tell you guys the full story. And I'm not going to bury the lead or anything like that. We've had requests from uh, Beyond Kickboxing, the bad boys on the Discord there to tell the story. And we are going to be covering uh, One Lights Out. The Full Glory 80. We're going to talk about uh, Andy Semler defending his title as well. And we're going to talk about 1X. All that stuff will be upcoming. But let's let's jump right into it. Uh, so we had floor seats there, myself, uh, and the gentleman who was essentially my fixer. He was like my, my translator for the media. Uh, we had got set up in the media room. There's other real media there, like POW, which is a big one in the Netherlands. There's Spike TV there and stuff like that. Essentially, I'm the smallest guy there by, by miles. <laughs> Uh, let me bring up some, some names here. here. Uh, but, so we get to our seats. Everything's looking good. We get four fights in, and things are looking pretty good. Tiffany Van Seuss has absolutely stolen this show. She's winning the hearts of everybody. We get a couple of knockouts in. Things are going smoothly. A few red flags start coming up as we go to buy beer. There is no alcohol allowed in this arena by any means. So none of the concessions were serving beer. Now, when that happens... That could just be a red flag. That might be something um, that says they are a little bit aware of future problems that may happen here. The lights start going down, and we know that the Badahari versus Arcadius Verdrosic fight is next, and stuff is already happening. No one's made the walkout yet, and guys are still are now beginning to throw chairs at each other. They're starting to throw garbage at each other, um, and fights are starting to break out in the audience already. So security comes in. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just want to say, yeah, because we uh... – on the on the broadcast at that time before the fight happened, they yeah. had went to uh, our guy. Um, Remy. Uh, oh, the other guy. Remy, Remy, Remy. Remy. Remy they, yeah, they, yeah. they went to Remy. So Remy. So 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 Remy. So so Remy was talking, and the next thing you know, you see things flying. They're like, and they're like, oh, <laughs> hey guys, something something's going on. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's go back to like Todd and and and, and, and like and like and like and like Joe ba- and, and Joe Battellini. But that's it. I just want to like on the broadcast before the fight. We knew something was popping off. We just didn't know what. Man, it was. So the thing is, I I think they started throwing chairs. So from where we were, I couldn't see the Polish contingent. But most of the crowd was, it was 50% like Moroccan. One quarter was Polish. And then one quarter was kind of everybody else. Uh, We couldn't see the Polish people from where we were. But we were around the other side. So people were running away from the Poles. This happened a few times. But the first one, before the walkouts, like 100 people just start running. And they're running past where we are. So naturally, we just start running with them, too. And I think, like, is there danger? And I turn around, and running next to me is Luis Tavares. And I think, man, if he's running from danger, I'm fucking running from danger. What am I going to do if Luis is running, right? So so this starts going down. Um, But, yeah, then we all kind of just, like, come back and be like, oh, it's fine. Everything's okay. We all come back. But it's tense in the arena now. Like, people haven't sat down in their seats. Everyone's standing up or standing on their chairs around the ring. Things are just kind of weird. Botter makes his walkout. Arcadius makes his walkout. It just feels like a normal sporting event still. Things are real fun. You get to the fight and the crowd is super in it. It's clearly a Botter crowd as well. Like every leg kick this guy was landing, every punch he was landing on gloves, everything that was blocked, the crowd was absolutely going wild for. Uh, Arcadius scores that knockdown and... And I'm pretty excited. That's a pretty sick thing to do. The flying knee knockdown. I turned to my guy and I'm like, dude, that's sick. And he was like, calm the hell down. We're clearly in a Badr Hari section. We don't want to get in trouble here with it. <laughs> he was like, dude, just shut sh- 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 the hell up, man. We're not getting in a fight today. Uh, but it didn't matter. We didn't get in a fight. Everyone else got in a fight. We got four fights on the card, four and a half fights. But you know, you, you got your money's worth because we got a few dozen fights in the audience. All we know, we don't see anything. But suddenly another like 100 people just a stampede running past where we are and everybody's in it. Like we're talking Luis Tavares, the lightweight champion. Tijani was there as well. They're all running away from this. So we're like, I don't know what we can't see what the problem is. So we'll run as well. 
And then we go around in the back room and we're talking to other people in the media. Of like, well, what's happening? What's happening? I turned to the glory representative and I'm like, what is going on? And the glory representative says, I have no idea. And then this is what like, I was talking about. I bring up my phone to get some news of what's happening at glory. And I was like, shit, I'm the news. I should just start reporting of what's happening at glory right now. Uh, so we kind of go out to the arena. People are still throwing chairs at each other. People are throwing garbage across the arena. like, And they're long range throws as well, going way above the ring. Uh, Botter is shaky as well. He never, it took him like five minutes to actually recover to any state where he was standing normally. He was yeah. extremely shaky after that knockdown. But I'm on his side of the room. So I can see him kind of like getting the audience going. His trainers are like, hey, just, just, calm yeah. down. Like he said, Melvin Manhoff was in the ring being like, can you guys sit down? Can you guys just like chill out? This is fine. It wasn't until the next day that I could see the videos of the, the Polish gentleman jumping the fence, getting chairs thrown or throwing chairs at everybody else and then getting chairs thrown back. So what had happened the next day, I kind of learned this. I talked to my contacts in Poland who I write with. And he said, these guys are really well known in Poland. And basically these guys shouldn't have been allowed in the arena at all. They are well-known soccer hooligans. They are the most notorious soccer hooligans in all of Poland. They support the team uh, Ligia. I don't yeah. know what that means. Yeah. But their group is called Teddy 95 Boys or Teddy Boys 95. And Arcadius, that's Arcadius's team. So he wears the color colors of Ligia and he has a Teddy Boys 95 tattoo on his arm. Those are his guys. Mm-hmm. And he brought them into the arena. These guys also have ties to perhaps organized crime. They also have ties to extreme nationalist right-wing views in Poland. So now when we recontextualize what was happening in the arena, you have a series of Moroccan Badr Hari fans and a bunch of right-wing nationalists. So I now understand much better why there wasn't alcohol served in the arena. But what I don't get, these guys jumped the fence between the second and third round. Their guy was winning. Yeah. Why did you stop the fight? So all of us in the arena thought this was Badr Hari fans stopping the fight because he was losing. Let's get him 10 minutes of recovery time. And yeah. I'm sure that's what it looked like on the broadcast too. It wasn't. I don't know what these Polish guys were up to, but shirts off. They're here to party. I think they came for a fight personally based on what I know now. I think they were there to brawl. But essentially, so they stopped it. They announced like, hey, it's been 10 minutes. You guys can't sit down. We are canceling the rest of the fight. And again, I turned to Glory, with my Glory rep. I'm like, what's happening? She's like, I don't know. (laughs) You know as much as me. (laughs) Okay, great. Um, Eventually, the security guards kind of like bottle these guys, but they're still receiving like garbage and chairs throwing because there's not enough security guards to stop people from doing that. Riot police was brought in. So I took a photo. I could see 10 police cars at one point. There's probably way more than that. But they get everybody out of the arena and we're hanging out in the... uh, in the media room and we figured we're not leaving because everyone's just going to fight in the parking lot. So we just hang out inside, yeah. get some photos. People are cleaning up at that point. And then, yeah, we go out in the parking lot, maybe an hour after the fight has ended and there's still guys in the parking lot trying to get in fights with each other. The police are still in the parking lot. Uh, and then, then we went home. So it was a fun time. It was a great event. How did it look on TV to you guys? Yeah. Uh, like I said, um, like I said, I was, when all, when all was going down, like I said, I, I like say from what I was getting from my contacts, if you want to call it that, I was getting that it was Polish soccer fans, yeah. which of course me, a hey, you can call me ignorant or anything like that. Like I say, I didn't know that Poland was so close to Belgium. Like I knew Belgium was mm-hmm. close to France and the Netherlands, but I was like, man, like is Poland really that close where they can just kind of travel over, you know? So, so I, I was, I was a little thrown off. I was, I was a little thrown off about that, but then yeah, as, as you say, right. Their guy was winning, so why is it as a fan would you like do this? Like your guy's winning now, you just took away his potential W again. You know, like he was probably he could have maybe he was maybe gonna win that fight. You know, after that knockdown, saying Badahari was rock, you just gave Badahari more time to recover. You know, so but yeah, but just like say like when uh, before the fight started, Remy, uh, Remy, Remy, and the guy I want to say Mark, Mark's his first name. They were they were talking, you know, you know, you know, hyping up the fight and everything like that. And the next thing you know, you see these things are flying in the background. They're like, oh, hey, guys, something's going down. Let's, you know, let's go back to like Todd and, and Joe, which they did. Then boom, you know, the fight happens. I'm thinking everything's cool. But hey, I'm seeing like contacts are telling me like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you know, these hooligan, you know, Polish soccer fans are, are kind of still making noises and stuff like that. And then, yeah, man, all hell broke loose. 
everybody on Twitter, of course, is trying to blame Bader fans. You know, yep. trying to blame you know, you know, trying to blame uh 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 Moroccans. Uh, this 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 what always happens when like Bader Hari fights. And I'm trying to tell people, I'm like, no, I'm hearing it's this. And then of course I hear crickets. You know, when when I. I uh, when uh, when I respond and stuff like that. So, which of course it was because then of course when you see the videos, you see the shirtless dudes, they're just throwing stuff out of nowhere, you know, and people are, people are just running away and stuff like that. So we, so there was one media member who got a really good video of the inciting incident. And, and he was, I, I don't think he's going to distribute it. Cause like he, he's not independent in any way or anything like that. He works for a major network, but he got a really good video that shows like, okay, so garbage is being thrown. These Polish guys now jump the fence. They were like, I really I think these guys were down for a fight, and the Moroccan yeah. fans weren't going to back down or anything like that. But yep. yeah, no, these Polish guys, and it was exactly as you described. We all thought the same thing of like these the Badahari army. Like, don't you don't even talk about them online because they're a real force to be reckoned with, and these guys are absolutely mad, and their guy is losing. That wasn't the scenario at all. It was these these uh, lovely gen gentlemen from Poland. Yep. But yeah. A absolute madness, and now the over shadowed like and i talked about it with some of the uh, media members there as well of is glory going to be okay it's been bad headlines for a little while here it's kind of shrunk from stadiums to a niche sport now they're already struggling with like they've lost tv deals in the united states and the netherlands they switched to a pay-per-view model which isn't a thing in the netherlands but they yeah. had to and now their first show, they might have to re also keep in mind they weren't making alcohol sales, so they're not making that much money at this event. They might have to refund the pay per view sales. Legitimately, we have concerns about the health of Glory in the future. Am I am I out to lunch on this one? No, I mean a lot of like a lot of people were were kind of throwing were kind of throwing up some you know some some thoughts about stuff like this. But I mean, hey, if they're still able to give uh, Tiffany Van Seuss a a a bonus for her performance. <sighs> That's true. Uh, I, I think I think they're gonna be all right. Like you know, like 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 I said. I mean, this was a short in fight. Like I mean, I mean, like there was only like a total of six fights on the card. You know, so yeah. but got then, four. yeah, you know. But then but then again, like like say like say like say you know they had this whole thing going on with with Glory Rivals and everything like that. Like say hey man, it's just one show. Let's see what you know. Let's see what the future holds. You know, I'm still like say you know me. I'm still I'm still gonna be optimistic. You, you know, we need we need companies like Glory, you know, doing know. these things yeah. and stuff like that. So, I mean, we shall say we'll see what happens because I want to say the next thing is going to be uh, May 21st, uh, Glory uh, Glory Rivals 1, you know? Glory Rivals 1, uh, the CEO of Infusion was there with us as well, which means that like, he was also running from this riot as well. <laughs> Him and his wife were there. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, man, this is a rough day. Uh, but yeah, we look forward to the future. Tiffany Van Seuss, let's, let's break down Glory 80. I'll start from the bottom. Jay Overmere, as you and I predicted, just outpaced him, found the openings, worked that opening from, uh, I think that was the second round, right? Yeah. He got three knockdowns. He found that opening. He's clearly an intelligent fighter. Losing to Andy Semler in a close fight is absolutely no shame. Now he makes his debut in Glory. This guy's probably going to be rushed to a title shot. He's very good. What do you think of the Joe, Jay Overmere fight? Hey, it was a good fight. I mean, hey, good fight to uh to uh start to you know start the car with you know on the prelims. You know, you are you are the first fight of the night, so you set the pace in which they did. Man, hey, it's always good to start with a finish, especially in your especially in your glory debut. So, I mean, he definitely uh, he he he, de he definitely uh, opened up some eyes. You know, yep. he raised some eyebrows. You know, if people if people didn't know who he was, uh, so yeah, I definitely uh, look forward. Uh, to 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 seeing him fight again. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Garrett Belay uh, defeats Nordine, our king of violence, the infusion boy, Nordine. We were hyping him up like Nordine's the future. It was a close fight. We'll give him yeah. that. It was a close well, fight. Yeah, no, it, that, that was that was a close fight. Uh, like, you know, you know, like like I said, I kind of I kind of thought Ben Mo would have been a little more action packed. You know, a little yeah. more you know faster pace. But hey, man, he took his time. I mean, hey, Belay, he came, he brought the fight. Uh, I think he got the knockdown in, in the in the in the second round. You know, so so that definitely helped him out, and uh, yeah, like you know, I mean, he, you know, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't finish Ben Mo. I mean, Ben uh, Ben Mo didn't look like slow, old, or anything like that. He was still in the fight, you know. But hey, good job, Garrick uh, Garrick Belay. Hey, Glory, just letting you know, I still would take that fight. But hey, so I was gonna I, say, hey man, I'm still there, baby. I'm still here, man. I'm still here. But uh, but yeah, it was it was a good fight. Uh, you know, hey, I look I look forward to see the, the scene what's next with, with Norton Ben Mo. I wouldn't yep. mind I wouldn't mind seeing a Norton Ben Mo uh versus uh my uh Muhammad Jiraiya uh two, you know, hey man, that you know it was a classic fight, 
you know, probably probably is my favorite kickboxing fight, you know, in the last, you know, five, 10 years. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I, I would I would definitely be down for that. But, hey, remember, Marama Jirai was supposed to was supposed, supposed to be on this card. Hey, I still got my hand up for him. Hey, I yo, I I would fight I'll fight Jiraiya too. The same glory. <laughs> you need a guy. You need a guy. I'll be their huckleberries. All right, <laughs> man. We gotta get you a fight in, in Europe. There is no rules in Belgium. It is a lawless. This is what all the Dutch friends, all my Dutch family was telling me. They're like, it's a lawless wasteland in Belgium. They can do anything they want in Belgium. <laughs> Sir Ken Oskaglein forgets that it's kickboxing and just swings his arm like he's powering windmills and defeats number one contender Etrigold Bayrak um he's going to the number one contender now he scored multiple knockdowns he had Bayrak dropped a bunch of times Bayrak never recovered he didn't look he had moments in this fight because Sarkhan is just swinging away but yeah. Sarkhan dominates this fight what do you think of this one no it was a good fight uh I mean I I really kind of thought this fight was going to be over uh in the first round but uh Barrett came back you know uh I mean he he uh I mean he was he was bringing it you know I mean he, he was he, he he was he was banging as well but I mean, I think I I just think um, I I think uh, I think it was just too much for him. You know, he got he kind of got overpowered. Um, you know, it kind of stinks for him because I want to say I think his last fight was against Alex Pereira, where he got caught at the end of the first round. So I mean, that's two fights in a row. You know, you took some L's. You probably maybe need you probably need to take a step back. But I mean, he did have plenty. Of, he did have plenty plenty of time off. You know, from, a, from that last Glory fight. So we shall see. You know, like I said, man, Glory man just needs to start getting these fights, man, getting, getting these guys more active again. See, and I think Rivals, the, the idea behind Rivals is absolutely correct. Now, they've scheduled three Rivals shows already, which is, I think I think they've scheduled three now. But that's a really good thing. They should be doing far more shows, far more active. And it's also building up the talent in Europe uh, by leaning with Infusion and not like working against Infusion, just working with each other, basically. Uh, and that's a really good thing. That's mm -hmm. I can love that. Uh, next up on the card... Our girl still the show. Tiffany Van Seuss gets a TKO stoppage victory after five knockdowns. She does a spinning back kick against the champion from Dream, Manazo Kobayashi. Absolutely unreal. She's landing head kicks. She's landing overhand. She's landing knees. What an absolute dominant performance. This might have been her best performance. I mean, man, we knew what was going to happen. We talked. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you know, we knew. Like, I'm watching this fight. I was kind of starting to feel bad for it, Kobe Ash. I was like, yo, why is this happening? You know, but I mean, homegirl is tough, man. She was she was taking those kicks to the face. She yep. was taking them shots. You know, every time she got down, she got up, man, except, except for that last one. Man, that, that, I mean, yo, liver shots, body shots. Like I tell people, man, they in fights. And Tiffany Van Seuss, she hit that, she hit that spinning back, you know, that spinning back kick on point. And it was, it was, it was, like I said, and she got, and she got, she, I think, I think, I think they got fight of the night bone, uh, honors and Tiffany Van Seuss. I got, I got a fight bonus. So kudos to her. Hey, I'm happy that Glory is doing fight bonuses. Hey, I've been, I've been a big proponent saying like, Hey, they've been chewing, they've been doing that for a while. Uh, you know, I mean, Hey, it's to me, to me, Hey, 20, you know, uh, 20,000. That is nothing to sneeze at. Like I was thinking like, like, Hey, you know, they would just do like 5,000, but Hey, they're doing 20 K right off the bat. I'm cool with that. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. No, I do agree with you. And Manazo Kobayashi, she she lost in lower weight classes. She was a champion even in a, a lower weight class than this natural. Uh, she she I think she's a rise champion at 112. And before we were talking about that, she did a tournament uh, where I think she had to drop down to be to be like 109 pounds. Gotcha. Yeah. So fighting at 130 is not the one, best. no 122 122. But 122 in this one. Yeah. That she was outsized in this one, but even outsized, like she she also looked like <laughs> Tiffany looks like a fighter. She, she has a body of a fighter. She has very like she has prominent shoulders. Her back looks strong. Tiffany looks like, or sorry, Minazu Kobayashi. It kind of looks like she does like gym gym work on the weekend or something like that. <laughs> like, yeah, <man. laughs> hey, like like I mean, I think they did it at the. Um, it was Todd Grisham. He did it at the Wayans, but he also said it at the um, uh, at, at, during the fight. Where basically, like at the weigh-ins, he said to her, like, "Oh, you know, you look so nice, you know, and you're are you always so kind? Like, how's it gonna be at the fight?" And basically, she was like, "Yeah, you know, yeah, I might look nice, but come fight time, you know, I'll, I, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn into the devil." So they, so basically, so, so basically, Todd Grisham spun it and was just like, "Hey, I might, I'm, I'm, I might look like an angel, but come fight time, I'm gonna turn into the devil type of deal." So, but you know, hey man, Tiffany Van Seuss combinations were on point, movement was on point. I mean, Tiffany Van Seuss was just doing Tiffany Van, uh, Van Seuss things. Uh, kudos to her, man. You know, 
uh, uh, with her painting as well. Like I said, man, that's what martial arts is about. That's why we love the sport, not what happened afterwards. But hey, I mean, it was it was like it was like, man, you got you kind of saw you kind of saw both kind of saw both worlds, the good and the bad. You know, and <laughs> fight the fight. Man, the the contrast of going from so respectful, we're happy to be working with each other. We recognize this as martial arts. To the next fight. This is, like you said, this is one extreme to the next. This is absolute madness. Let's talk about the fight itself, which ended officially as a no contest. Um, Batahari was ahead in the first round, but for an all-time great, I don't think he was winning as much as people thought he was winning. He was doing okay Yeah, against a guy who has two losses and one win in glory. Uh, the second round, Arcadius Verdrosic was probably pretty close to even, in all honesty, up to that flying knee which definitely rocked and dropped Badahari. Badahari walked to his corner, and he was not okay. How did it look at home? How did you score the fight? How do you feel about these two? Yeah, so, I mean, Rosic, man, came out first round guns blazing. Like, he was like, hey, I'm here. I'm confident. Like, say, maybe that last fight, you say, give him the confidence. Like, honestly, it was a close first round. Uh, I kind of thought Rosic maybe took it. I think one of the five judges did give it to him because I was kind of shocked when when, when – when I saw four judges get get, get uh, uh give it to Botter, even even Joe Valtellini on the broadcast was kind of shocked about that too. You know, um, it, was, it, was, it looked quite okay. So I haven't watched the fight on TV. I'm just remembering what I watched yeah. live. So it was actually quite. You guys can honestly see better at home, but it was quite close. Yeah, yeah. I I like I said I did think it was close, but I kind of thought maybe maybe it was the beginning because like because like to me, man, it just looked like Rosic was just coming out throwing those body kicks as well throwing his punches, you know, but then but I think I want to say, I kind of want to say, I think how it went was maybe Rosic started off strong in the, in the beginning of the first round, but Badahari ended the first round pretty well. So maybe that's why it kind of looked like it was maybe all about in that, but like the second round, you, 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 you give it to Rosic because, because he had the knockdown. So that was a, so, so, so that, so that was a 10, eight round for him, 10, nine for Bader in the first, but we didn't get to see what happened in the third though. Matt and, we don't get to see what happens in the third. What do you do if it was up to you? Do you rebook these guys? Do you try to move on from this cursed matchup? Do you try – like, Belgium was as neutral territory as it gets between Morocco and Poland, and yet it still broke out in riots there. Do you do it at the UFC apex where there's no audience at all? Like, what do you actually do? If it was up to you, Brandon, what do, you, what do we do now? I mean – if it was me in the first place, man, I think the rematch would would not have happened. But I think they wanted to give. I think Badahari wanted it. So now this fight is over. It's one of those things where it's like to me as a fan, you kind of want to see what's gonna happen. So to me, it's like I feel like we do want to have this match again, you know. But if they don't do it, I'm cool with them going going their separate ways, you, yeah. you know. But I mean, it's one of those things. Where it's like, man, you kind of want to see what was going on because this fight was closer than the first fight. So it's like, because like the first fight, you're like, oh, Bada Harvey was straight destroying him. Yeah. You know, Rosic, you know, he, he, you know, he got that kick, boom, it was over. But this fight, they were kind of going back and forth. So you really don't know what, what you know, what, what was going to happen in that third round, you know, yep. type of deal. So, so like as a fight fan, you're like, man, I kind of want to see what, you know, what would have happened. But hey, as an organization and maybe as the fighters, like, I mean, like, like, I mean, if I'm probably Rosic, I'm probably like, yo, I'm done. I'm over. Give me, give me, uh, give me my title shot, or or somebody, or somebody, or somebody else. You know, which of course Plaza Bot I heard was in the arena though. Uh, he was on, the, yeah, he was with the. <laughs> they gave me Luis Tavares and put the real fighters like on the other side. Right. I don't, I don't know why they separated. Like they were like, oh well, some of these uh, high ranked heavyweights need to be protected, and uh, it's yeah. not Luis Tavares. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> um, uh, Overeem was also in the arena as well. So I think there's six fighters right now on Glory, and I wanted to talk about. Uh, I, I was hoping on Monday we could talk about what are you doing with the heavyweight division because there were, there was six guys and those are Levy Richters, Jamal Ben Sadiq, Arcadius Verdrosic, Badahar, Antonio Plazavat, and Alistair Overeem who all could claim a title. After Glory 80, we were supposed to have a fairly clear idea as to what's happening with Rico Verhoeven's title. It's now more muddy than it was before. We have less idea as to what the hell we're doing. Honestly, Plazavat is the number one contender. Overeem is the money fight. Uh, yeah. Richter, these four guys who were supposed to fight at Glory 80... Like, do we still sort it out? Like, what, what are we doing I mean, with the heavyweight title here? I mean, to me, Rickers, Sadiq, they still got to fight because their fight never happened, unfortunately, with what happened on Saturday. So, I mean, so, so, so to me, those guys, they got to run it back. 
Uh, to me, man, it's up to Rico. Is either is either Rico, you either get an Overeem or you're choosing Plaza Bot. To me, it's up to Rico, whatever he wants to do. Because originally he was supposed to fight Overeem, but Overeem got hurt. So it was like you can run that back. Plaza Bot has done his thing, so he does deserve a title shot. So I mean, if you're Plaza Bot, do you just wait and let and let Overeem and, and Rico fight, or do you give or do you give Overeem some time to kind of heal up, relax, and chill? And then and then you let and then you let and then you let Plaza get the title shot. But most likely, I feel like I feel like I feel like it's gonna be Rico versus Overeem and Plaza and Plaza is just gonna wait on the sidelines. But knowing Plaza he probably won't wait on the sidelines because he just wants to fight. He likes to fight. So I but that's what I think will happen. I mean, if I'm an organization, that's probably what I'm gonna do. I'm saying we're trying to get that money fight. Cause like I said, you're worried about glory, you know, bad things happen with glory. So you bring that Overeem fight in. That's true. You know, that's a money fight for you right there. Yeah, you got me there. It's it's we gotta find that balance between sport and entertainment, and the organization does need to make sure that it's viable. And that overeem fight is the right fight to make in that scenario because people uh, the people I was speaking to in the Netherlands who don't follow kickboxing know Rico and know Alistair Overing. They don't know Antonio Plaza, but they don't know like even Levy Richter's kind of thing. Mm-hmm. They barely know Jamal Ben Sadiq. So yeah, they can actually put that fight on TV and probably have it sell on pay-per-view and save the organization but especially if you're rico and they they come to you with two offers right like we got this young hungry knockout machine from croatia or some older fighter who hasn't won in a few years but he's a way bigger name and you're gonna make way more money for fighting him like, yeah. i mean uh, i mean up. i mean plus too like that's a fight right there that 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 i say they, they're gonna go back to the netherlands they're gonna go back to the uh soccer stadium you know was it the uh barrel dome right oh, I, I don't know if i said that right <laughs> Thirty thousand um, people in the same yeah Exactly, you know, but that but that's the place right there. To me, you put Rico over him. That that right there is 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 a sellout. You could probably you could probably maybe finally get your Tavares Vahitov fight on that you know probably. card as well. Hopefully, if Tavares is willing to fight Vahitov, you know, with everything going on uh, by then. Uh, but we we shall see. Like uh, like I said, I mean, I was hoping that Glory eighty one would be announced, but I guess maybe they're really trying to pump up you know the Glory rivals first, you know, thing uh, with them. So maybe maybe Glory eighty one will, will happen in the summertime. You know, maybe July, August, September is usually like when they sometimes do do shows. Man, they got to do way more shows. They got to do more. Yeah. Like we don't we don't have enough. Uh, like they are the premier kickboxing organization, and uh, man, do some more shows. Gosh, I mean, um, I mean, like I say, I mean, I guess I like I say, I mean, they are doing shows, but they're doing with, you know, you know, with with Infusion, so they're doing Glory Rivals, which of course, which of course, anyway, I hear like I know in the first one, I think. I believe like the undercard is mostly like just infusion fights. It's the main yeah. card is where it's glory versus infusion. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I could, let's break it down. It was the next thing on the agenda. Any final word on a uh, uh, glory 80 at all? Hey man, it was a good, it was a, it was a good event. You know, it, it just, man, it, it just ended in a bad way. Like I said, I, I really do feel bad for, um, uh, for uh, Jamal Ben Sadiq and Levi Rickers, man, you guys show up to the arena, you're ready to fight, and then boom, you know, you don't you don't get the fight. It's like it's like it's like you show up to you show up to you show up to do something, and boom, uh, there was a a fire alarm went off, you know, and they and they, and they had to uh, they had to uh, evacuate the building for you. Man, and it sucks because those guys trained for months and months and months. Now they're gonna have to wait months more. Levy has twins on the way; he might not be interested in fighting next week or two weeks yeah. from now he has got a busy schedule and man, it sucks uh also on the media tip i forgot that you asked me this but uh, so yeah they do do interviews but glory unlike when i was covering bellator does it at the same time that the fights are on so you get an opportunity to do an interview or you can watch the fight now as a media person I- i'm just gonna watch the fight honestly like, yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> i got a free fight to watch um just separate them by 20 minutes give us 20 minutes to interview jay and they're announcing the next fight. Just like, yeah. give me a minute. Uh, we also have Harut Gregorian will defend his title, or sorry, will be fighting at Glory Rivals 1 against Andy Semler. Uh, Harut Gregorian was a former welterweight champion in Glory, and Andy yeah. Semler, I believe, is still the the welterweight champion in Glory. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Perfect. In Infusion, yes. Oh, I, sorry, at Infusion. Sorry, I'm, I'll turn it around. Tell us yeah, more I about mean, this. I want to say Andy Semler's b- bounced around away because I know he fought at... Uh, uh, I want to say he fought out like one one sixty five, or was right. it one sixty? I think I think one sixty because he was seventy two point five kilos. So I think that I believe that's one that's one sixty. So yeah, he's fought he's fought he's fought at one sixty before. He's fought at one seventy. He's fought at one fifty four as well. So I mean, he's gone up and down, but I probably think one seventy probably could be uh, his best his best weight class because he probably you know don't have to really lose that much. 
man, he's jumped all over the way. He's fought super bond of all people. Like he's, he's really around and weighed, you know what I mean? Uh, so this is a big announcement. Glory Rivals won. This is going to be May 21st. This looks really good. This looks like a ton of fun. What's your initial assessment of this fight? What do you think is going to happen? Other than yeah. violent. Yeah, and I, and when I saw that, I was like, oh, wait, man, this is, this is, this is a big one. Like, I feel like this is a good step for um, uh, Indy uh, similar to see where he is because say everybody knows who uh, Harat Gregorian is, you know, like say, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, former former glory welterweight champion. He's somebody who just comes forward. You know, yeah. so I mean, hey man, if you, you if you get a W against him, you are you are definitely world uh, a world class for sure. So I think I like to say I think I think it's a good fight for Andy Samuel. You know, to, to to kind of put his name out there, and we and we'll we'll, we'll see what happens. And we are excited for this. I'm definitely watching this one. This one's going to be so good. We also have uh, to catch weight 100 kilograms. Luis Tavares is for Tariq Tariq Cabez. I'm not going to say it right. Versus Tariq. <laughs> Are you going Tank? I think Tank would like to go by Tank. You know, no, no, that guy. That's a great fight. That's a really good fight right there. I'm surprised that's not the headliner, but I guess there's no title involved. But it's very close to a title. But I, I really do like that co, uh, the 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 co-main event there. I think that's a great fight. Yeah, this is this. Is, I mean, this fight announcement is just it's just weird because it was supposed <laughs> to be Tavares versus Vahita for the title. Tavares oh. says, Tavares says, now nah, I'm not gonna fight. And so then Tank steps in to fight Vahitov at a catch weight. And then Vahitov is like, yeah, let's do it. And then like a day later, he's like, nah, I changed my mind. I don't want to do it. So now Tavares and Tank are going to fight. And it's just like, what? How did we get here? It's a good matchup. But yeah. the path here sure didn't add up. And it still is. Even I've had people, other like uh, some casual fans be like, what's the Russian story? And I tell them and they go, that doesn't make any sense. That's a yeah. weird thing that happened there. Man, it's a weird one. Uh, let's take a quick look back, and then we'll take a big look forward because this weekend's a big one. But one championship is keeping us just absolutely, what's the word, excited on kickboxing yeah. and Muay Thai. They are really keeping kick sport active here. Week in, week out, they've got some good stuff. Uh, our Your girl, Amon Barlow. Not even, hey, she got a first round stoppage due to cut. But it was a dominant win. I think she had a flawless victory. She did the yep. spearing elbow to finish it and open up the cut. She looked flawless in this fight. What was your assessment? So, Iman, again, man, like 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 I said about Tiffany Van Suits, man, Iman Barlow doing Iman Barlow things, man. Those round kicks coming hard, coming fast, throwing those elbows, got the cut. I think the fight did did continue for a little bit, and then and and then and then the refs and then the ref decided to step in and and have, and have them take a look at it. Fight was over, but. Like I said, that was that was her one debut. Uh, let's see what happens. Like I said, she's somebody who will who, who will definitely be fighting for the title real soon. Oh man, we yeah, so so excited for the future of her. She looked absolutely flawless in this one. But we also had a little young phenom who we didn't. I admittedly did not know uh, this young man from China. I, I forget how old he is, but he's a real young boy, Zhang. Pima. Oh, he's 18. That was the thing. He was 18 years old. Right. Zhang Pima. Yeah. Absolutely unreal speed against the Australian Josh Tana. He looks like, like a faster tension. This guy is absolutely insane. This is the next phenom. If you're watching for kickboxing prospects, Zhang Pima, put that name down and follow this kid because he is unreal of how fast he is. Speed kills, man. That's all I got to say, man. He looked real good, real good. Um, it, was, it, was definitely, it was definitely a good fight. It was a good fight. I definitely enjoyed it. And we had a real banger. This is what heavyweights are all about. This is what we wanted at Glory 80. Iraj Azizapur battles back and throws haymakers against Ishmael Lunt of Suriname and the Netherlands. Both guys are absolutely throwing bombs and haymakers in this fight. And Iraj of Iran gets it done and wins in the second round TKO. What do you think of this matchup? This was a ton of fun. Yeah, no, nah, man. Uh, I want to say, man, Ishmael Lump, man. He just seemed like he just seemed like he was kind of reckless in this fight, man. He was kind of doing kind of doing things that he doesn't really normally do. He was kind of just going like kind of just winging punches out there, you know. And boom, he got caught for it. Uh, but hey, man, like say Ishmael Lump, he's been in the game a while. Like say, you know, maybe maybe you know he's a little bit older, body, you know, body's banged up. You know, he's not the same. Yeah. But we shall see. Like I said, that was I think that was his first fight in one as well. You know, everybody's debut was is, is always different. Yeah, well, especially taking a flight to Singapore, they, there's a pandemic going on. You don't entirely know what's going on in yeah. someone's background. And plus, I, I think people can be magnetically, especially people who are professional fighters, can be drawn into brawls. And Araj Azizapur is a kind of guy who is always brawling with his opponents. And if you play his game, if you're magnetically drawn into his game, then you shouldn't be. Follow your game plan. But if you're drawn into his game, he's going to beat you at his own game, right? Yeah. Yep. 
And, it, uh, when, and then I just want to say on the on this car, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Liam Nolan as well, man. That dude was a banger as well, man. That dude was quick as well. Combinations yeah. were on point, man. Did his thing, uh, man. He he was he was sharp. He was sharp. Uh, yeah, this was a good matchup for him as well. A, a really dominant victory uh, in Muay Thai. Round one TKO. It, I wanted to support Kim because he came out to uh, Sea Shanty songs. So I really was like, man, Kim's the guy. Kim's my future yeah. goat. No, not even close. Uh, <laughs> Liam Nolan is definitely one to keep your eye on. He looked good. Man, one lights out was such a good event. I, I know like, we're kissing cousins with MMA here at this point, right? Like we can talk a little bit about it. Jiu-Jitsu is canceled, right? Like it's done. We've killed Jiu-Jitsu at this point. Am, am I wrong? Ah, man, I mean one. I mean one. One is doing jujitsu matches at at this at their upcoming event. So no, no, Ton Lee knocked out Gary Tonin. I don't want to hear about jujitsu. It's done. <laughs> hey, man, that's what happens when you go for leg locks, man. Your your face, your face is your face is is uh, is uh, exposed. Fun time. Bibiano Fernandez gets in a firefight and gets knocked out by a little little Hulk, John yeah, Lineker. John Lineker, man. Ooh, just a banger of a fight. And Martin Wynn uh, beats uh, Kirill Gorovets. A much needed win as well. I, I like Martin a lot. Anything else you want to throw for one lights out on this one? No, I mean, just what I said about the two sisters, man. They both came in there in the fight. They both took L's. So I lost. <laughs> yep. Sorry. But by the, way, by the way, man, but I was right, though, about what I say. Every Muay Thai fight, it seems like in glory, they wear MMA gloves. But kickboxing fights, they, they have them wear the, they, they have them wear the, the boxing gloves. So that's just something just to be on the lookout for. I mean, right now, uh, yeah, I, I just – I want just an explanation is all that would be nice. I'm not questioning like this doesn't make sense. I'm happy. This makes a lot of sense. I like the way it looks. I just would love a little bit of an explanation as a thought process. Theoretically, you could do kickboxing in small clubs. Well, yep. I don't know. Just, I would just love a small explanation about that. Anyway, I, I write for one. They might send me an email and be like, here, publish this crap. So, oh. <laughs> next – Coming up, I am so excited for this one. I'm writing about this one every day leading up to it. 1X, and it's a big one. Do you mind if we cover a little bit of MMA coming up in this 1X card? Uh, I don't I don't mind it, man. You know me, man. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a combat sports fan, so it don't matter to me. Well, exactly that. I figured you wouldn't mind. I'm very excited for this one. There's some great kickboxing and Muay Thai on this card as well. So there's, a lot of, there's actually a lot of kickboxing and Muay Thai on this card. This is what I've told MMA fans on like other shows and articles and group chats of one championship does MMA to advertise for how good their kickboxing is, right? Like they have the best kickboxing maybe in the world, especially in the lower weight classes. I don't know what that is, but and then, see that <laughs> it's just to advertise. They do MMA to bring in Americans to show them what kickboxing is supposed to be. Cause kickboxing has to be one championship's main product. It is their best thing. Is it not? Yeah, I say it is. I mean, I don't really watch one for the MMA unless it's somebody who probably does MMA, but they usually maybe kickbox like maybe like the main event on this one coming, like our girl Stan Fairtex. You know, Ooh, man, don't get me started. City Chai is going to be fighting Shingis Alazov. Uh, this is the featherweight Grand Prix final. This is how good this card is. So they're doing three parts. Yep. Part one will be on YouTube. Part two will be on watch.1fc.com. Part three will be uh, on pay per view. And that's great. Hopefully it really works out for them. The headlining on part one is their featherweight Grand Prix final between City Chai and Shingi Zalazov. This is an awesome fight. I'm super excited for this one. We've talked about this fight before. I don't think you've moved on your prediction of who wins the entire tournament here. What do you think, Brandon? You know what it is, man. Kill a kid, City Chai getting the dub. Get, he's going to get that dub. Uh, I mean, I think I think it's going to be a banger of a fight. Um, you know, I, I think I think City Chai will definitely, definitely have to be on his P's and Q's. Uh, yep. but I, I just, I, I, like I said, I just, from day one, I just thought this just his tournament to get it to, he's just, he's just on his revenge tour. Uh, yeah. he's, he's, gonna, <laughs> he's gonna get his hand raised and then he's going to get that title shot. Do you have any prediction for the weird one? Uh, John Wayne Parr, he's announced this is his retirement fight. He's at 99 wins. He wants 100 wins and then call it a day. And he's fighting the former lightweight MMA champion who started in Wushu, uh, Edward Foliang. It's a cute story. Edward Foliang fought at one championship one. 10 years ago. And now he's at one championship 10 years on and he's still on the card. It's a really nice story. I don't know what to predict for this matchup. I want John Wayne Parr to get a win, but the guy has like half a knee and one yep. hip. Man, what do you think of this one? Yeah, no, nah, man. I mean, hey, John Wayne Parr, man, a legend in the in, in the sport, man. You know, he's been doing this for a while. Uh, like I said, he's in his 40s, still fighting, you know, still putting up the good fight. But I just, 
I don't see it, man. I don't. I mean, you know, what I'm saying we all, we all, we all want to go out on the W, but I don't know. I mean, it could happen. Things can happen, but I just, I just don't, I just don't see it. I don't think it's, I don't think it will. I, uh, I struggle to see it as well. I mean, he's looked. If he fought Nikki Holskin, and that's not like a young guy he was fighting yeah. by any means, you know, and he he's not looking good. Yeah. But this is this is they his thing, man. And speaking of Nikki Holskin, he's also going to be fighting. Uh, I see Summit in a Muay Thai bout. I don't have any prediction on this because I haven't seen uh, seen Summit fight before. Uh, it's I think I'm naturally always going to say it's probably going to be the gentleman from Thailand defeating Nikki Holskin, but stop yeah. doing him wrong. Yeah, nah, it's it's, it's kind of weird because it's kind of like oh, Nikki Holskin's doing Muay Thai, but I really want to know if he's just doing the, if he's just doing Muay Thai because he gets to do the the, the four ounce gloves, you know. Maybe. So, I mean, hey man, Nikki Holskin has power. He has he ha- he has a boxing background. Um, yep. I mean, hey, I'm all right, man. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna rock with the natural. I'm gonna go with Nikki Holskin to get the job done. Uh, you know, like I said, man, he he he, ha- he has a punch. Like I said, man, he's not he's not people out in 10 ounce gloves. Now now he has, now he has 4 ounce gloves. You know, I I that's what that that's what I see happening. I see him getting it done with his hands if there is a finish. Man, I yeah, can't can't fight with you too much there. MMA, we got Jeremy Medow versus Lito Adewang, two Filipinos who are both bangers and they are down to brawl. I have no prediction, but I guarantee violence. Rainier De Ritter is going to get an aggressive. He fought two weeks ago. He's fighting in 5 days now against Andre Galval, the multi-time ADCC world champion. Uh, any, any anything you want to throw out on those ones before we move to some more kickboxing uh, at one X? No, nah, no. Nah, I mean, I mean, besides on that prelim, I mean, just really, if just if you're really a comments friend, look up for the jujitsu match with uh, Danielle Kelly. You know? Yeah, Danielle Kelly making her know. debut against May Yamaguchi. May Yamaguchi is a trailblazer in the sport. So. Uh, yeah, she, yeah. So she, uh, when May Yamaguchi fought MMA for the first time, Danielle Kelly was 11 years old. May, May has fought the best of the best, generation over generation. Uh, yeah, submission grappling match against Daniel Kelly here. Uh, May also brought in like Sakuraba to train with and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a lot of legacy going on here. Some really good stuff. We also have the Muay Thai Bantamweight Championship. This will be on 1X Part 2. Uh, Felipe Lobo will be fighting Nongo. What do you think of this one? This is a... What yeah. This? I'm going to go I'm going to go I'm going to go with the champ on this one, man. I yeah. think I think I think it's going to be and still uh, yeah. you know, I, I mean, when you, when I go, when I think of Muay Thai and I think of a, a Thai versus a Brazilian, I'm going to go with the Thai. Hey. I know. <laughs> I can't not. Hey, I'm just be I'm just keeping it real people. Don't be mad at me. And Nongo likely gets it done. Totally co-sign with you. And similarly, we have Capitan will be defending his title against Hiroki Akimoto. And this will be, oh, this will, one will be kickboxing. Okay. Yep. So. So that's it does really recontextualize what's going on in the fight. Capitan has some amazing wins last year, and he's kind of looking flawless at the moment. I'm gonna pick Capitan. If you pick him, you're just copying me, so you have to pick the other guy. No, actually, actually, no. I'm glad. I'm glad you went that way because to be honest with you, when I was looking at this, I actually am gonna go with the uh, Hiroki. I oh, I, tell yeah, us. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm gonna be different, man. I mean, like I said, Capitan man, has been killing it, but I just think I'm thinking of the rule set, kickboxing. I just think baby hurt, man, and and. And I and I've seen Hiroki fight a couple of times. Uh, you know, I, I just think he's gonna get the job done. So it's gonna be and new. And new for the one kickboxing bantamweight championship. Honestly, you haven't been wrong since we started doing this program. Don't doubt the mechanic, is what I've said time in, time out. I, I you were so correct, I had to buy your t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, we also have uh, Sio Hoham, D- Denise Zambuanga in a rematch. Itsuki Arata will be fighting Jiren Raduzan. Uh, just so many good fights on this card. But Itsuki then- Arata, baby. Look, watch out for a man who goes dangerous on the ground. Yeah, she's an amazing judoka. Started when she was like six years old or something like that. Absolutely unreal. Uh, she was supposed to be in the Autumn Weight Grand Prix. I think she had one fight and then dropped out due to injury. But either way, man, Adam Weight is a good division. Just kicking off. This is like the prelim fight. This is how good the main thing is. March 26th, 1X on the first prelim on the pay-per-view portion. Superbon will be defending his championship in a rematch, trying to avenge his loss to Merrick Gregorian. We've talked about it before. What do you see in this one? Man, violence is definitely what I see. Violence, yes. <laughs> definitely see violence for sure. Man, I'm going to... It's like, man, like, I want to say Superbon, but I got to go with... I got to go with Gregorian. He has he has the W already on him. Knocked him out. So he yeah. already has that over Superbond. 
I just think Mirage is gonna go in, do his thing, forward pressure, and he's gonna and he's gonna and he's gonna and he's gonna just he's gonna just swallow Super Bob. Since we started this show, you had told me you said it was gonna be City Chai versus Super Bond in the end of all this, the tournament winner versus the champion. And now you're flipping on me. You're saying it's gonna no, be Mar- no, because at that time, at that time, yeah, I guess Gregory was in the tournament. <laughs> Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, okay. Yeah, got me there. Okay. So who's going to be? So we, it, it, what we're seeing here is, is City Chai is certainly going to likely win the tournament, and then that means he's definitely a contender for the next one. It, would you pick City Chai over Merritt? Of course. He okay. already beat him like three times. He like, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Gregorian has one win over him, and that and that and that was because. And that and that and that and that and that was because Sid Chai even said he was like, "Yo, I didn't really want to fight him. I was bored. This is like our fourth time fighting." But it's the weirdest thing with kickboxing too. With like sometimes you're like, "Oh yeah, this is like a what's it like a, not like an octa elegy at this point." But one guy's won seven fights already. Yeah, not really. exactly. <laughs> and kickboxing sometimes is like this is the best sport, and then you look at the numbers and championships, and you're like, "Ah, I wish the yakuza was still organizing this sport. It was better when it was yakuza involved." <laughs> Um, so we have, yeah, Edward Foley and John Wayne Parr, Japanese MMA legends, Yoshihiro Akiyama and Shinya Aoki are trash talking each other. Sexy Yama is back to fight Tobakan Judan. I don't know. Just like the J MMA fan in me. I'm just a real dork when it comes to this stuff. This is exciting, but man, it's gotta be Shinya Aoki, right? Like, am I crazy here? I mean, I would, hey man, Shin, you know, Shinya Aoki does have some power in his hands. I know, I know a lot of people sleep on his hands, but he has dropped some people, but I mean, we all, we all know him for, for. Uh, for his uh, jujitsu, uh, I mean, but hey, man, sexy Yama, he got some, he got some power to it in, in his hands as well. But I mean, I just want to go with probably that um, um, sexy Yama is a little bit older, so you know, we 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 got to go with Aoki. I'm gonna go with Aoki as well. I'm gonna rock with Aoki. Yeah, even in their prime, I would I would kind of question this fight. But like between them, they've had some weird like they fought everybody from Fedor to Michael Bisbing and they're essentially welterweights and fought Ben Askren. Like these guys have had an amazing career. Genki Sudo was there with the weigh-ins like good stuff guys. Adriano Marias will defend his title against Yu Yu Wakam- Wakamatsu, but the entire, their entire flyweight division is overseen by Demetrius Johnson where like, yeah, these guys are fighting for the title, but can we just get DJ in there? But DJ is yep. busy doing a special rules bout against Rod Tang, a uh, Rod Tang, of course, the multi-time Muay Thai world champion. He's a young guy at 20, I think 24 years old with yep. hundreds of wins to his name. He has far more fights than Demetrius does, despite Demetrius being a multi-time UFC t- title holder, title setter, uh, First round going to be Muay Thai and small gloves. S- second round will be MMA, uh, and then it'll alternate three oh, yep. um, rounds of this. Uh, but it will be in small gloves, and it will be three minute rounds each. So the MMA yep. rounds will be three minutes each. What do you see in this matchup? There's a lot of hype in this one. Yeah, no, nah, I mean I'm definitely looking forward to it. I mean, yo, DJ. I mean, definitely the first and third round, man. He's got to be. He's got to be on his P's and Q's. Uh, yeah. you know, he's got, got to, he's got to try to survive, you know, you know, make, make it to that second round and, and try to get those takedowns and, and use his wrestling. But I mean, yo, if he tries to stand and bang with, with Rod Tang, it's going to be lights out for him. So I, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to it. I don't really know what's going to happen. You know, like I said, like I said, maybe we don't know who Rod Tang's been training with, you know, you know, his takedown defense, you know, could be, could, could be, could be something, but you know, we, we, we won't really know until we see. Yeah, and this is the thing. I, I always like evidence-based arguments. of like, I've never seen him do it. I have to assume he's then doing it at a low level, an amateur level. Demetrius Johnson has been doing double legs since he could walk, right? He's, yeah. been, he's been wrestling in jiu-jitsu his entire life. Uh, he's an amazing striker. He gets fast submissions. Like, I want to say a second-round finish for Demetrius Johnson because it's very hard to pick when you have a specialist versus a generalist. I have to imagine that Demetrius can survive the first round and then finish him in the generalist round. If he gets knocked out by Rod Tang, though, the scenes, the scenes on, oh my God, it would be absolutely unreal, but I can't, realistically, I can't say that, right? Mm, hey, man, you know, never know, man, that first round, like, what is Demetrius going to do? Like, is he really going to try to just circle around the entire time? He's going he's gonna to have to try to get in there and mix it up. You know? Yeah, I know he's gonna have to get in there. It does sound like though in interviews and stuff that he's totally fine with just like circling to the outside. He, he's like Rod Tang isn't that aggressive. I think I can avoid him. I think I can out angle him and just kind of react defensively. I think DJ likes to bang a little bit more than that. And I think he's gonna get get in there and really throw down in the first round. It should be a fun fight though. Yep. 
Main event will be Angela Lee. She's defended the title four times, and she's saying, this is the biggest fight of my life. She's defended it four times. Um, this is her first fight back since having a baby. Uh, and she's going to be fighting the young phenom, Stamp Fairtex. She was the Muay Thai and kickboxing world champion, the multi-sport world champion. And last year in 2021, she won the women's Adam White Grand Prix with a submission win against Commonwealth medalist wrestler Ritu Fagat. Absolutely unreal. I am so excited for this fight. I am so in the camp of Stamp Fairtex. I am not even seeing all the evidence base that this is... This is clearly an Angela Lee at advantageous fight. Am I wrong in saying that? I don't care what you guys say. Stamp Fairtex is winning this one. Uh, I mean, hey, I'm I'm rocking with you, Stamp Fairtex. Like I said, you know, she, yo, like I said, she's coming from the kickboxing side. You know me, I always I always got to rock with the kickboxers, you know, the or the more you know the more type fighters. Uh, I mean, to me, I say if this fight is standing up, it's Stamp Fairtex all day. The only problem is when it goes to the ground. How 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 has Stamp Fairtex ground been? Hey, like you said, her last fight, she did get a submission. You know, good so, round. She had good know, takedown defense too. Yeah. She had much improved. Yeah. So, so, so I was. I mean, so I mean, Angeli, ha, you know, has to be aware of that. Same plus two, like say, you know, Stan Fairtex, she's been active. She's been busy. She's been fighting. Angeli, she's been off. So you never know, man. Her timing could be off, and that, and I, and I, and that could be all what Stan Fairtex needs, and, and she could just catch her. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. It's, I think Stan Fairtex absolutely has an advantage on the feet, and. She has been showing huge improvements in between bouts in MMA for takedown defense. And she's working off of her back. She's working in the clinch. She has a lot of advantages and tools here. She's young. She's hungry. And what's nice about this matchup, and we were talking about this earlier, is how respectful these two have been. Stan Fairtex says, Angela Lee, it, she's my idol. It's a dream that I can fight her. And Angela Lee says, yeah, I'm a huge fan of Stan Fairtex. It's an honor to be able to fight her like this. It's, it's great to see, is it not? Yes, yes, it's awesome. Go always, uh, it's 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 always it's always good to see the uh, the uh, sportsmanship in, in in the sports. Absolutely, and, and because we are a, a kick show, we are a kickboxing show. I'll finish with one more thing. Because one championship hasn't released it yet, but I did ask Demetrius Johnson a question recently. Um, Akiyama had called out uh, Mike Tyson. He said, "I want to do Mike Tyson in a pay per view boxing match." And so I asked Demetrius Johnson, would you also like to fight Mike Tyson in a, in a pay-per-view boxing match? And DJ essentially just said I was an idiot for asking that question. So that's nice. But he's right. <laughs> yeah. We have 1X. The 10th anniversary of one championship will be March 26th. Uh, we got tons of kickboxing, such as Glory Rivals 1. We'll have some other stuff coming up. I don't have the calendar in front of us. We're going to be back in two weeks. Brandon, what do you got going on in the meantime? What do you want to shout out to everybody? I mean, I just, you know what I want to say? I want to say thank you, everybody who commented on our show last time. Man, the comments were were just flowing. Appreciate it. Please do it again this show as well. Let us know if there's anything that we're wrong. Let us know your thoughts about Glory 80. Well, you know, if hey, hey, if you were there, hey, you know, let us know your experience, you know, with the, you know, with the crowd, or just or just give it or just give us your thoughts on, on our picks. On, on what you think, like I said, I think Sid Chai is gonna get the dubs all day. Let me know. Let me know if you think I'm wrong. Um, and yeah, man, just guys, yo, let's just keep growing it, man. The views are coming. Let's keep it going. Let's keep spreading the word. Kickboxing is here, baby. Kickboxing is not dead. Let's keep it going. So yeah, absolutely. We are kicking it with Tim and the Mechanic. My name is Tim Wheaton, joined as always by Branda Catino. When we need to get dressed in the morning, our wives always say, hey, make sure you wear the fighters first. <laughs> Nothing else even looks good. So just wear that. I am surprised. This is a very nice t-shirt. Romania, uh, I think it was Romanian male, finally got a hold of it. So we got it sort of. And that's not even a joke. That's like, I got an email. I was like, Romania is on it. It's on its way. And then it arrived. All right, folks. Thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate your time. And we'll talk to you soon.